My name is Lorraine Siegel. I have, uh, at the moment, I'm CEO of a little farm company, and uh, that's my fifth or sixth business, I think. I am a serial entrepreneur and uh, started off life as a, uh, as a lawyer. Did not enjoy that, so I was happy to uh, move into the business world and um, got involved in a financial services company. I eventually became president of the mortgage brokerage subsidiary of that company. Then moved uh, after that, uh, we did some acquisitions which were complete failures and then uh, I learned all the things that I didn't really want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, moved from that into, sold my stock and moved into uh, the startup of a healthcare company which was a freestanding ambulatory care clinic and built that out with venture capital money into a 10 unit chain and sold out of that and then uh, became CEO of an aerospace distribution company in advanced materials used for microchip manufacture. So um, managed to build the company and sell it and uh, then by serendipity actually backed into becoming a consultant in strategic alliances basically because I'd used alliances to turn around my company and belong to a CEO network actually of 500 technology CEOs and they um, these guys started calling me and saying could you help us with our company and before I knew it I was a consultant. I have a uh, law degree uh, from South Africa uh, which I did not finish because we emigrated to the United States and I came here and I did a JD and uh, worked as a lawyer for a couple of years which I didn't like and uh, then I did an MBA and so in addition to a master's in classics and undergraduate degree in Latin and English I was a high school teacher for a while in Latin and then taught um, uh, Latin at university level to law students which is how I got into law so I have masters, JD, MBA and I think entrepreneurship is all about learning from experience so it was good to have all those degrees I think going to college is a, a general education and that one should try and take as many interesting courses as possible to expand and bend and stretch your mind and that's what it's really all about. I think um, becoming a good um, analyst, being able to analyze things, being able to read really fast and accumulate knowledge and then disseminate out of that what's important and what isn't. These are all things that come from educating yourself. So. I really don't think that any particular education is um, spe specified to be a successful entrepreneur. I think just becoming educated and enabling yourself to, to become a discerning human being, that's very important. Business education was essential and the MBA that I did gave me the confidence that my gut instinct was pretty darn good. Uh, and also then augmented areas which I had absolutely no knowledge of and that was finance and accounting. I uh, was pretty good at marketing but you know statistics, finance, accounting, production, manufacturing, things like that were not things that came automatically to me. So I think doing a business education whether it's undergraduate or an MBA is essential to being a good business person. Fundamentally I was raised to believe that if I really wanted to do something and worked hard I could make it happen and that was the essential element that I think enabled me to not be afraid. I'm actually pretty fearless when it comes to doing stuff which means that I've had many different careers and reinvented myself many times. In fact, I never had a mentor, in fact I had the anti-mentor. I had many figures, authority figures in my life saying no you can't do that and, and the South African culture when I grew up was all about no, no in every area. It was no to women, no to people of color, no, no, no. So I learned to be the bull in the china shop. If you give me no, um, and sometimes it's got me into serious trouble because I do things that I really shouldn't be doing um, because they don't suit me and they're not right for me and I'm not enjoying them but I'm doing them because somebody said I couldn't. So I've had to kind of grow myself out of that but it is an incentive to me when somebody says no. It means to me that they are just not thinking right, that there needs to be further thought on the situation and I generally start focusing heavily on how to make it happen. Sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it isn't but I'm happy to take the bad times with the good because most of the time when I've done that it's worked out fine. Work-life balance is a critical success factor for women in business and it's possible to have it all. I have had it all. 
just not perfect all the time. And I think if one understands that there are cycles to life, and if you're in a dual career family, which my husband and I are, then at times his career will have predominance or your career will have predominance. So it's never a linear progression of careers for a two-career family. There are times when one of you has to step aside or step back, and that takes a negotiation. So you really need to become partners in, in life in general. And childcare is something that has to be shared. So in the days when I was a young mom, that was not the case. Now I'm happy to say that my son, even as an entrepreneur, is sharing childcare with his wife. So I think that young women today have tremendous advantages in finding life partners who will be willing to collaborate in every aspect of their lives, both in their careers and in child rearing. And you can have it all. Failure was never an option. So uh, of course one is afraid of failure. It's something which is part of being successful. And I have failed many, many times. I have not succeeded at everything I've, I've tried to do. Um, but I have learned so much from everything I've failed at that I've never sat around with the covers over my head being depressed. So picking yourself up from failure is the essential element of success. So I think that being afraid of failure is defeating. Uh, welcome it. It's part of learning. And uh, pick yourself up and go forward to the next opportunity. I think the biggest challenge for young women today is too much information, too many options, uh, too many choices. So there's a level of confusion about where should I be, what should I be, how should I pursue, what do I want to be when I grow up. And so my advice is choose a, a road right now and take that road. You can always take another road. And I guess my entire life has been moving from one different industry to another. And it can be fairly seamless. There's a learning curve, but there are principles and processes that approach um, excellence in just about every segment that you might look at. So I think that if you become good at something, that will enable you to become good in some other area. So just become excellent in whatever you choose to do and don't worry about whether it's for the rest of your life. There's going to be many other opportunities to change if you need to. My advice to, to young women, no matter where they are, is to realize that you can actually achieve your dreams. First, you have to have a dream. And to have a dream, you may need to expose yourself to a lot of different ideas and educate yourself as much as you can in lots of areas. Don't limit yourself just to one area. Secondly, if you are willing to work hard, if you're willing to pay your dues, and believe you me, there were years and years and years that I spent studying indoors while everybody was outside, swimming, sailing, having fun. I was indoors studying. Um, you pay your dues, and it's not fun those first uh, years. Uh, you will come out the other end. Um, that you can have it all, maybe just not all at the same time, all the time, and that uh, having the confidence that if you fail, it's a learning opportunity and there will be a bright day not too far down the road. All of those things come together and no matter where you live, I come from, from Africa, no matter where you live, if you are determined and work hard and are ethical and are healthy, you can do it all.